This is one issue that is going to determine the future of mankind. It is one issue that is going to challenge the world and its people. It is one issue that is throwing up more questions than answers. It is one issue that will require the world to sit up and take notice. This sensitive global issue, worrying people all over the world, is climate change. Climate change occurred naturally in the past for various reasons. But why are we worried about it now? Over the last 200 years, human actions such as burning of fossil fuels and deforestation have contributed to increasing greenhouse gas emissions. This has resulted in rising temperatures and several other changes across the world. Forests are nature's means of absorbing carbon from the atmosphere and cleaning up the air. But deforestation in the last 15 years has resulted in nearly 200 million hectares of forests being lost. That's almost half the size of India. Millions of tons of carbon have been released into the atmosphere as large tracts of forests have gone up in flames. The decade of the 90s was the warmest ever since temperature records were maintained. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change projects that over the next 100 years, the Earth's surface temperature could increase by 1.4 to 5.8 degrees centigrade. If this happens, it would be greater than what man has experienced in the last 10,000 years. This could be accompanied by changes in rainfall patterns and sea level rise. Many of these changes have already started affecting our lives. Abnormal weather conditions are already a reality. The Gangotri Glacier in the Himalayas, for example, is retreating at a speed of about 30 meters a year. If warming continues, there will be excess water flowing in the rivers. But once this source begins to dry, there may be dry periods resulting in very little water flowing down into life-giving rivers. It is a scary scenario as it is, many parts of India reel under the impact of drought every summer. Sea level rise may have a physical impact on coastal areas and island states. People living in low-lying areas like Bangladesh live in the fear of severe flooding due to its typical typography. Flooding becomes a major problem as the water cannot be drained away. Floods and cyclones end up wrecking millions of lives. Islands like the Maldives face severe threats of being swallowed by the sea. India's long coastline of over 6,000 kilometers is densely populated. Several million people may be impacted in India alone if the sea level rises by a meter. By the end of this century, there will be a sea level rise of half a meter, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Sea level rise will affect mangroves that form a part of the fragile ecosystem in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Mangroves are the crucial feeding and breeding grounds for marine life. It protects the mainland from the fury of storms and the sea. In areas where the mangroves have been destroyed, it has led to erosion. The rise in sea level will have an economic impact. Take for example the Sundarbans that has one of the largest mangroves in the world. What will happen to nearly 600,000 people who work in the industries that use raw materials from the area? Their life is tied to the future of the Sundarbans.
climate change may also increase sea temperature that could damage coral reefs. If sea water becomes too warm, coral could bleach. There is already evidence of it happening in some parts of the world. Coral reefs support rich and diverse forms of marine life. Rise in sea surface temperatures could also influence the distribution of freshwater and marine fish species. This could directly affect the livelihood of fishermen. Penguins, dependent on ice, in the Western Antarctic Peninsula are at risk too. The ice in the sea is melting and reducing their habitat. In the last 25 years, their population has decreased by 20%. Changes in temperature and rainfall patterns will directly affect agriculture and food security of numerous developing countries. The change in temperature will affect the moisture in the soil and growth of pests and weeds. Countries like India, whose economies are largely agricultural and heavily dependent on rainfall, could be the worst affected. Almost two-thirds of Indian agriculture is heavily dependent on natural factors such as rainfall. Millions in India would be affected if the cycle of rains got disrupted. Farmers will be among the worst affected, especially if they are dependent on rain. Changing rainfall patterns could also aggravate problems of desertification. Climate change will threaten all forms of life on Earth, including plants and animals. However, the degree of sensitivity will vary from one species to another. Changes in climate could alter the natural habitat and sustainability of forest ecosystems. These changes could impact livelihoods, industry, biodiversity, soil and water resources. These could lead to migration of forests to higher elevations, searching for more moisture or a lower temperature. Warm and moist climates might result in the spread of vector-borne diseases like malaria. Waterborne diseases like diarrhea and cholera would also continue for longer periods, affecting larger populations. Developing countries that are battling population growth and poverty are the most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Ironically, most developing economies are also heavily dependent on climate-sensitive sectors like agriculture, forestry and fishing. Many of these countries are facing challenges of economic growth. The growing impact of climate change will only aggravate their problems. Developed countries that have created technologies for cleaner production would do well to transfer these at affordable prices to poor countries. This is essential for the well-being of people in developing countries who are already under stress. The principle that polluters must pay should be applied. The economic transition that can lift people above the poverty line has to be accomplished without the attendant large-scale pollution through the use of cleaner technologies. Developed nations used fossil fuels for decades to leap into prosperity. They continue to have high emission rates even today. Cutting through the politics of the day, they must lead the way in cutting greenhouse gas emissions. Tropical countries like India will find the effect of climate change more severe than their counterparts. 
the maximum temperature in these countries has already touched human tolerance levels. Even a 1% increase in temperature would be felt far more severely here than in countries of temperate climate. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions is one of mankind's toughest challenges today. Without partnerships that involve both the developed and developing countries, this is not going to happen easily. Moving from fossil fuels to renewable energy is one answer. Countries will have to move towards renewable technologies and harness the power of the sun and the wind. coastal areas with forests, manage water resources prudently, and weave in drought and disaster management, and design programs that will address development issues. Climate change has already started affecting the poor. Future strategies to combat climate change will be more effective if it is linked to development. It will be easier to push it through. Adaptation is one of the keys to help communities and ecosystems cope with changing climate conditions. Communities in India have relied on the bank of traditional wisdom to adapt to numerous challenges. In the state of Gujarat, no one needs to tell these villagers that forests are their lifeline. Thousands of forest protection committees formed by the villagers have worked with the forest department to restore denuded forests. As the forests regenerate, lives around are improving. In many parts of India, traditional water harvesting practices are helping farmers battle the grim reality of drought. In the central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh, for instance, a water conservation movement spread over 51,000 villages has gradually transformed a barren landscape, giving farmers a new hope. Such traditional practices can bloom if governments and modern institutions blend it with science. However, a macro approach is essential to tackle such challenges. Elsewhere, farmers are also adopting tillage practices that require less water. In the western state of Maharashtra, villagers have formed informal water councils to regulate water management and distribution. Their philosophy is simple. All farmers get the same quantity of water, irrespective of the size of their farms. To save water, villagers have banned water-intensive crops like sugarcane. The logic is to adapt to changing patterns of climate. For many decades, the Sundarbans in West Bengal coped without electricity. Theirs was a dark world. But now, aided by the government, villagers are using renewables like solar, wind and biomass to light up their homes and lives. Battling with darkness is now just a memory, as night becomes day. With easy access to electricity, they no more have to suffer noxious fumes from kerosene lamps. Firozabad, near Agra, has a huge number of glass factories, mainly working with coal-based furnaces that were heavily polluting the atmosphere. But now the units are rapidly shifting to cleaner fuels like gas. Madhav blows life into molten glass all day in a factory that has shifted to gas. It is a skill he perfected down the years from his grandfather and father who worked with furnaces that severely polluted the atmosphere. The 
long term solution must be to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by moving from fossil fuels to cleaner sources of energy. Many positive efforts are spreading a new energy and a new dream. But a lot remains to be done. Obviously, a change in lifestyles and value systems will be required if things have to change. We have to look at lifestyles that do not damage the world. Mahatma Gandhi once said that the earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not every man's greed. Have we paid heed to the warnings of the scientific community? Have we done what is expected of us? There is no country that will not be affected by climate change. The world has to work together to tackle the challenge. Time is ticking away. We do not have a lifetime to wake up to the unfolding tragedy. It is now and here. We can no more behave as if there is another earth to move into. There is no other place to run away to. Every waking hour, we need to ask ourselves if we can work towards building a better world for our children.